welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to upgrade the EEPROM on a Raspberry Pi 5 so it can install its own operating system from the internet. This functionality became available in mid-April 2024 and it's particularly useful if you want to install a Pi 5 operating system on an NVMe SSD that's fitted in a hat or a case like this Argon Neo 5 that restricts access to the microSD card slot. So, let's go and get started. Greetings! Here we have our Raspberry Pi 5 in its lovely Neo 5 case, although if we look underneath like that you'll see I've removed the, uh, the cover and there's no NVMe SSD fitted and there's also no microSD card inside the case in the Pi, so this Pi has got no storage. And I want you to first of all boot the Pi up without any storage to show you what happens before we've upgraded the EEPROM. So uh, let's just connect up an HDMI monitor like that and the power like that. And if we now go across to the video output of the Pi, I've got the Pi connected via a mixer so we see black when the Pi is not turned on, but we'll now turn on the power. There we go and hopefully in a second something will happen. It's always exciting booting up a Raspberry Pi, isn't it? And uh, all its fans making a slight noise, you might be able to hear that. But uh, other than that, nothing's happened yet, but it will do. Wait a second, and uh, there we are. We can see the Pi has uh, tried to boot up. It can't boot up, it hasn't got any storage. And this is all it's going to do right now, but once we've upgraded the EEPROM, at this point it should offer us the opportunity to install an operating system on any available storage. But for now we'll uh, go back to the Pi itself and we'll uh, turn off the power like that, because what we need to do is to have an operating system running so we can do the EEPROM update. And uh, to make that happen I've got here a microSD card which has got Raspberry Pi OS on it, and I've got a Lexar microSD card reader, and I'm going to put that in here if I can get it in the right way around. I think it goes in like uh, that. There we are. That's uh, all well and good. And uh, if I now uh, turn the power back on and we go across to uh, the Pi, it should hopefully boot up from that microSD card, and we'll fast forward through. And here we are in Raspberry Pi OS, where I think the first thing we're going to do is to go to the web like that. Always exciting to go to the web. And uh, I've set the browser to show us the available EEPROM updates for the Raspberry Pi 5. And the critical one is this one here from the 17th of April 2024, which as you can see enables network install. So what we need is to have this update or a later one installed on the Pi so we've got network install available. And to find out what we've got currently installed, let's open up the terminal. And here if we type rpi eprom and uh, update, this won't actually update anything, it'll just give us some information, as you'll see if I press enter, and uh, there we are. We can see the current bootloader on the Pi, the current eprom is the one from the 6th of December 2023, and the latest available apparently is from the 6th of December 2023, which obviously isn't the case because we've just seen there's a more recent one available on the web. But uh, what's going on here is the Pi has only got certain EEPROM files available it could install. And these are the files available over here in this particular folder. Let's take a look at that actually. Let's just uh, show you things properly so we're not just uh, talking about it. We're actually showing exactly what's going on. Let's go down to uh, firmware and then go down to Raspberry Pi. There it is, look. And there we can see the bootloaders and we want to, as you can see down here, 27712. And there we are. And we can see, for example, in the default EEPROM folder directory, the latest available is the one from the, the uh, 6th of December 2023. That matches uh, what we're seeing up here. And note these are the files available in the default directory. You can see the Pi is set to uh, take default upgrades to its EEPROM. It will automatically implement default upgrades. But you can actually change this if you want in Raspberry Pi config to, for example, to take critical updates, now I think called stable updates. But uh, the key thing is we have to have available the April 2024 update if we want to have the network installed. And so what we're going to do is actually very simple. We're going to update the Pi. We're going to do a sudo apt update to first of all update its repositories like that. 
Not everything works, sadly, but uh, hopefully there's enough. And we'll now do a sudo apt full upgrade like that, which will upgrade everything. And I need to press yes to continue. And uh, this will take a little while to work through because as we can see, I've not updated my Pi since December, 2023. So we'll now use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there you are, it's finished. So let's now do a sudo and reboot to uh, fairly obviously reboot the Pi. And here we are booted up again and hopefully during that update process the Pi has picked up some more EEPROM configuration files. We can in fact check that of course. Let's just go and have a look shall we? Let's be, uh, let's be nosy. Let's look back in uh, lib and uh, firmware where it is down there and a Raspberry Pi and uh, the bootloaders, and we'll look in default again. And oh yes, look, we've got lots of new bootloaders, including one down to the 17th, and they did the 20th of April, so we should be okay. And uh, if we're lucky during the update process, the Pi will actually have applied the latest bootloader. So let's just have a look. Let's find the command in the buffer and uh, have a look. And yes, the Pi's bootloader is now the one from the 20th of April 2024, rather than the one from back in December 2023. And it's worth noting, if the Pi hadn't automatically implied the update you wanted, you can do it manually using the RPI EEPROM update command. You'd enter something like this to update to the specific file you wanted to, to use, but we don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do now is to close down the Pi and we'll test if this has worked. Uh, shall we shut down? Yes, we shall. And we'll go back to uh, the Pi itself. Hello, Pi. Are you OK? Yes, I'm fine, it says. And uh, I'm actually going to disconnect the power just to be absolutely safe, because what I'm going to do now is to take out from over here the micro SD card. We're now back to no storage on the Pi. And I'm going to put in this uh, NVMe SSD. And this NVMe SSD is completely blank. It's in factory state. Let's just put in the screw over here. This is the wrong screw, you might notice. It's a little silvery screw. It should be a black screw because the screw it should be in here went on a journey this morning. It went on its holidays on the floor and I haven't found where it's gone to. But anyway, that's what we've got. It'll hold it in place. I could put the cover on. I think I'll probably do that later. It's too exciting to put it on right now. But anyway, let's leave the cover off for now. And we're going to reboot the Pi with this completely blank NVMe SSD. So let's uh, plug in the power like that and uh, go across to the Pi's uh, output. And yes, look, we can install an operating system on this Raspberry Pi. Press and hold Shift to uh, start a net install. And so I'm obviously pressing and holding Shift. It's waiting for the network. Setting up connection, that's very exciting. And of course, as I'm sure you noted on the Pi, we do have a, an Ethernet lead plugged in. This has got a, a wired connection to the internet and it's now downloading the installer. I'm presuming I can let go of the shift key now and uh, we'll just uh, speed on through whilst it downloads the necessary files. And there we are. We're now running the network installer. And as I understand it, what's happening here, it's loaded the required files into RAM and uh, we can hopefully now choose a device, which will obviously be Raspberry Pi 5. There is a very special skill required here, which is reading the smallest font in the known universe. Uh, we now need to pick an operating system. Shall we pick Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit? Let's do that. There are other general purpose operating systems, of course, available. We could have Ubuntu if we wanted to, but we'll, we'll stick with the uh, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. Uh, uh, that'll be fine. Uh, and we'll choose our storage, which of course has got to be our uh, NVMe SSD. It's got a picture of a micro SD card, but it's most definitely an NVMe SSD. So we'll now click on next. Would you like to apply OS customization settings? Yes, we'll edit the settings to check everything is OK. Hostname Raspberry Pi. I don't think there's a lot I need to do here. I don't need to configure wireless network. No, I think I'll, I'll leave this lot as it is. It'll be fine. For now, I'll just uh, save and uh, no, we'll continue. All existing data will be erased, we know. Do we want to continue? Yes, we do. And once again, we will grab hold of that very strange thing called time and uh, drag it forward at an accelerated rate. And there we are. Our Raspberry Pi 5 has ventured into cyberspace, found its own operating system, installed it, and it's now booting up from it. It's all very exciting. 
indeed. And uh, here we are at the first run wizard of the newly installed operating system. We'll just uh, skip through this lot to let ourselves uh, see things are working okay. And uh, there we are. We have to restart once again. And it's worked. We're now running Raspberry Pi OS from our NVMe SSD from uh, this very NVMe SSD over here. It was completely blank a few minutes ago. It's now got the operating system on it installed by the network installer. Greetings, here I am back again. I've now had a nice cup of tea to recover from all the excitement in the last segment of the video. And I've also, as usual, scaled things up so uh, we've got readable fonts on this system again now, which I think is always useful. And if you've got previous experience using an NVMe SSD on a Raspberry Pi 5, you might be thinking, what about configuration? We just saw a Raspberry Pi 5 install its own operating system on an NVMe SSD, and we didn't do anything to edit configuration files to make it work. And these days, by which I mean the days of April, May, and onwards to 24, things do generally just work with NVMe SSDs on a Pi if you're using one of the latest cases or hats which is uh, fully compliant with the specification. So we didn't have to do anything to configuration files to make an NVMe SSD work as a boot drive on, on the Raspberry Pi 5. This said, there is one piece of configuration we may well want to do, and to demonstrate the issue, let's just do an LSBLK list block devices. We can see our NVMe drive there, it's only storage on the Pi, and let's just test the speed of the drive. I've installed HD parameters here using a sudo apt install HD palm. So if we run the test, we will see we have a speed of about 400, 429.17 in this test megabytes a second. And that's not bad, but it does indicate the Pi's PCIe interface is running at PCIe 2.0 speed, and we can do better than that. And to do better than that, we need to edit the config file over in boot and firmware. So let's just do a sudo nano and then a boot and a firmware and a config text like that. Have I got that right? Looks like I have. And in here, there won't be any command specifically for the NVMe SSD. So what I'm going to do is go all the way down to the end there, which is a, that looks like the end to me. And we'll just put in a comment because I'm being good about that these days. Set gen three speed for NVMe SSD. And then we'll put in the command dt param equal PCIe times one gen equal three. There we go, that looks uh, okay to me. And I'll just press a control X because it annoys people I know, but it's a perfectly valid way to uh, save an exit. Do we want to save the file? Yes, and uh, there we go. And if we now do a sudo and a reboot. And here we are back again. And if we repeat our speed test, there it is. Are we gonna be faster this time? Hopefully we are. Cross your fingers, always important. And uh, yes, 809 megabytes a second. It was worth adding that extra bit of code to the config file. And so there we are. We have demonstrated the very useful network operating system install functionality now available on a Raspberry Pi 5. Right. A final question you might have is, how would you change the operating system on the NVMe SSD? And this is very straightforward. The Pi is currently off, as you can see, and we'll go across to its uh, output, and I'll just turn it on by pressing its little power button down there like that, which of course you can't see me doing, but there we are. I've turned it on. I wanna show you this boot in real time so you can see exactly what happens on a normal boot in real time. I've got a black screen now, very exciting. Nothing going on, or oh, we've got the usual Pi type thing, and it'll boot up nice and fast because it's booting from an NVMe drive. That's a normal boot. However, if we wanted to change this operating system to something else, we could uh, shut it down, and what we could do is hold down the Shift key during boot. So let's uh, do that, let's uh, do a reboot, and I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, and uh, well, that's what I'm doing, I'm holding down the Shift key. It's, uh, Exciting piece of exercise for me, there we are. And as you can see, it's taken us back into the network installer. So it's now possible for us to install another operating system on the NVMe SSD. 
And just to prove the point, because my Crucial P3 Plus has not suffered enough, let's add another operating system. We'll go to Pi 5, we'll choose no S, we'll go other general purpose OS, that's what that says. Honestly, let's choose Ubuntu. Let's be wild and try 2404, as I recently reviewed on the channel. Storage has got to be, of course, the uh, NVMe SSD, and we'll click on Next, and confirm we really want to do it. And here we are, now arriving in the latest version of Ubuntu. We do have a few little bits of configuration to do, of course, to finish things off. And we've just about finished. There's always something else on the end, isn't there? But uh, for now, we'll just uh, finish there. And we've clearly successfully used the network installer to transition from Raspberry Pi OS to Ubuntu. The Raspberry Pi 5 network installer is really useful, not least because it means you can set up a Raspberry Pi 5 without access to another computer. And do note that whilst in this video we've been installing the operating system on an NVMe SSD, the installer is equally happy to install an operating system on a microSD card or a USB drive. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,